Man passes a grocery store where he has an account. He picks up an apple from a box which is clearly marked 25 cents a piece. He holds it up so that the clerk inside can see. And then he passes on. Now, is there a contract? Mr. Williamson? Uh, no, there is no express agreement. There's really no agreement of any kind. There's none in writing and no oral agreement. I see. Have you yourself, Mr. Williamson, never entered into an agreement where no words passed your lips? No. Not even in your personal relationships? You would appear to lead a very limited life, Mr. Williamson. <laughs> Ford? There is an agreement, but it is implied rather than expressed. Is it implied in fact or in law? In law. Really? And what law implies it, Mr. Ford? Well... I ask you again, Mr. Ford, which law? I'm not sure. For good reason. It is a contract implied in fact. Now, did you read the material, Mr. Ford? I did, sir, several times. Well, just once during those several times, absorb it. on my dress and candy on my hips. Oh. I'm so sorry. Please, it was all my fault. No, no, no. Let's call it a draw. God was trying to tell me something. I was going to have candy for dinner. <laughs> Is this one of your favorite restaurants? Deluxe. There's a diner across the street if I want to go four-star. <sighs> Listen, my name is Herb. Hello. I'm Rose. Nice to meet you. Formally, that is. <laughs> I'm here visiting my son. How oh, nice. Do you have a kid here, too? No, I have me here. I'm a law student. No kidding. Oh, that's great. How does your husband feel about that? Well, I don't know. We don't talk. We're separated. Oh, that's terrific. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm not married either. I'm divorced. Could I buy you a candy bar somewhere else? Oh, no, no. I I'd love to, but I have a study group. I really have to go. Well, what about dinner tomorrow night? Uh... Uh, it might not be as good as the diner across the street, but I think I know a few good places. Dinner? Yeah, my son can get along without me for one night. Tomorrow? Well, I'm going to be in town all week, so if tomorrow's bad... No, no, no. Tomorrow's just fine. Well, good. I, I have to go. Uh, where am I going to uh, pick you up? Why don't we meet right here? Here. <laughs> okay. How about 8 o'clock? Okay, fine. I'll see you at 8. Uh, Rose. Samuel. Herb. Huh? Soloway. Soloway. <sighs> Eugene, I just met a terrific I'm woman. Not... There's only half a cup here. Uh, she lives right here in your dorm room. Who? Who? The law student that I'm, I'm going to be taking to dinner tomorrow night. What? 
You're taking out a law student? Yes, I just met her. She's really, really nice lady. That's disgusting. These women are 23 years old. Eugene. First you leave my mother, now you are stooping girls. Eugene. It's just beneath contempt, that's all. In the first place, your mother left me, and in the second place, I'm not talking about a girl, I'm talking about a grown woman. This is Rose Samuels. Oh, my God, that's even worse. Why? She's a very nice lady. She's so old. Dark. Don't you ever leave this place? My home away from home. You might as well bring a sleeping bag. Mm, good idea. What are you working on now? Same thing. My torts paper for Rowan. I thought you'd finish that. Isn't it due tomorrow? I read it through. It wasn't good enough. Steve, this is from the 18th century. You don't have to go back that far. The doctrine of res ipsa locator has been undergoing judicial evolution for hundreds of years. I need to trace its development if I'm to have a clear understanding of its present significance. Yeah, but that's a lot of extra work. Makes for a better paper. You going to make the deadline? I'll make it. Well, I'm going back to the dorm. You ought to do the same. We got Kingsfield tomorrow morning. I know. I gotta get this right. All right. too old to date. The only time you're too old to date is when you're dead. You've got to keep the juices flowing. I'll tell you something. I was Veronica Virgin when I was single, and the minute I separated, I became a virgin again. That reminds me of a joke. I heard it. He is really attractive, though. Why am I telling all this to you? I'm old enough to be your mother. You're three years older than my mother. <laughs> really, you're going to have a great time. Trust me. No, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Just be yourself. Obviously, he liked what he saw. He wouldn't have asked you out in the first place. I can't go through with this. I don't know how to do this. It's a mistake. I know it. Look, if you're that nervous about it, I will coach you. I've had lots of experience. I used to give my daughters this lecture. I just don't remember what I used to say. Up until this time, we have studied but for causation. This is a specific act without which a certain result would not have occurred. <clears throat> a car stalls at an intersection. A minute later, a second car runs a red light and smacks into the first car. Did the stalled battery cause the accident? This was but for causation. Had the car not stalled, it would not have been in the intersection to be smacked broadside by the second car. The question is whether the defective battery was the legal cause of the accident. Thursday, we'll begin with the cases which deal with the collateral source rule. Remember that that prohibits defendants from forcing plaintiffs to deduct insurance payments from the amount awarded by the court. I'd suggest... <clears throat> 
I'd suggest that you pay particular attention to the policy arguments pro and con. Four eighty seven of the case book. Okay. That's it for today. Steve. Professor Rowan? Yes. I feel terrible over missing your class. I know our papers are due today. I'd like to be able to turn it in tomorrow. I'm sorry. Tomorrow's too late. The assignment was for today. Yes, I know, but... Mr. Williamson, if you were practicing law and were required to deliver a brief on a certain date, I'm sure you'd get it in on time. The circumstances are different. I don't think they are. But, sir... I don't make exceptions. You had three weeks to write this, just like everyone else in class. I did write it. I just wanted to make it better. That's why... There are no excuses, Mr. Williamson. I'm sorry. Please. Please, will you listen to me? I told you I'd get it in! Hey! What's the matter with you? I'm, I'm all right. Oh, my God. Thank you. Oh, my God. Nice, isn't it? It'll be swollen for days. So instead of being regarded as a fount of wisdom, I'll be looked on by my students as an object of pity or a source of pleasure, depending on how they feel about me. Well, at least you won't have to miss any classes. Unless, of course, you don't feel up to them. <sighs> I may miss one the day I appear in court. I see. So you are going to press charges, then? First thing tomorrow. You don't seem pleased. Well, you are certainly within your rights, Michael. But you wish I'd reconsider. Charles, I don't want to put the boy in jail. And I'm sure that won't happen. He'll be fine. Maybe he'll get probation. Just as long as he's made to understand that you don't go around hitting people without provocation. I am not defending him. I'm interested in the welfare of this school and in yours. You think I'll suffer some kind of onus? As you say, the young man acted without provocation. You know that, I know that. But some may feel that you're being overly vindictive. Well, that would be their problem. No, it could also become ours. We teach reverence for the legal process here, Michael. And I can imagine the headlines now. Angry law student takes law into his own hands. You think I should do nothing? No. I think you should leave it to the disciplinary board and they will take whatever action is appropriate. Still waiting. Should be soon. One is in there now. He kept putting notices on a bulletin board without getting them cleared. I think they were a call for an armed rebellion. Maybe I could trade punishments with him. You know what you're going to say? I feel remorse. God knows I do. But I apologize, offer to pay his medical bills. And then I'm going to beg for mercy. Good luck. Do I deserve it? Thanks. I mean it, Tom. Thanks a lot. I got a class now, so, uh... I know. I'm in the same class, remember? Mia! Yeah. Oh, it's you. Mind if I come in? So, I understand you're going to be socializing with my, uh, male parent this evening. Yes, I'm having dinner with your father. You realize, of course, that uh, while my father enjoys a handsome salary, he pays a large chunk of his earnings in alimony to my mother. Soloway, I am not interested in your father's bank account. Well, I just thought that if you were shopping for a spouse... I'm not even divorced yet, Soloway. That's true, I forgot. You're still a married woman. <laughs> Uh, Though it might be advantageous if you were to eventually marry my father. You and I could open up an office together. 
Soloway and Soloway, attorneys at law. <laughs> just imagine. Mom. Soloway, we're just having dinner together. He is. Well. <clears throat> it's a start. Close the door. Of course. I don't know why you're bothering. He's never going to see my feet. It never hurts to be prepared. I haven't the faintest idea what we're going to talk about. I've taken care of it. <laughs> Conversational crib notes? You're crazy. Guaranteed to get you an A in small talk. Topic number one, ask about his work. That ought to be good for about five minutes. Five minutes? Ten minutes. Topic number two, what he's doing in town. Topic number three. Should I ask about his son? Soloway? No. Talk about the weather, anything but Soloway. You want to get depressed? Topic number three, his favorite hobbies. Should I ask him about his divorce? That's topic number nine. Laura. What if he asks about me? <clears throat> Fake it. It's open. Expulsion. Permanent. Steve, I'm sorry. Did you liberate it? I don't know. 20, 30 minutes? No more than that. And that's it? It was an automatic review, a, a new hearing, if I wanted. What are you going to do? I don't know. Oh, dear God, I don't know. Steve, if there's anything, anything at all I can do to help. How are you with miracles? <laughs> miracles are a little out of my line, but I could help. I'll see what I can do. It's a five-man board with Kingsfield as chairman. Tom, I don't understand why you want to defend this guy. He obviously doesn't belong here. Oh, come on. Don't blow it out of proportion. He struck a professor because he couldn't get an extension, and he's a student of law. Anyway, you're wasting your time. And that is something even my valedictorian brother cannot afford to do. What were you planning to do? Well if, well, if we could just show them what a good guy is, I think they'll lighten the punishment. Ah, the great guy defense. No, what I mean is, he was first in his class, summa cum laude, phi beta kappa, and the guy's as smart as a whip. If I could, I'd argue temporary insanity. I think he was out of control at the time. Good luck. What's wrong with going that way? Well, they're law professors, they're protecting one of their own. They won't accept something like that. They are law professors. That's precisely the point. If anyone would accept an insanity defense, they would. You really think I could argue that? I don't see you doing anything else. Hmm. No way. Why should I see the school shrink? It's your only hope. I'm not insane. I know you're not. The plea is temporary insanity. I don't want to be known as the resident psychotic. Look, you won't be resident anything unless we do something. I saw you when you slugged Rowan. You were out of your freaking mind. I'd be more out of my mind if I went along with this. Look, what were you feeling at the moment you hit Rowan? I don't remember. I tried and I tried, but I don't remember. That's what I mean. If we can prove that you were unable to stop yourself or appreciate the wrongfulness of your conduct, we've got a case. It's our only chance to keep you in school. Okay, I'll see him. All I needed was a little more time to get it just right. How long before it would be just right? I don't know. <laughs> Probably a few more weeks. It's my first law school paper. I wanted it to be good. What if it were less than good? I know all that stuff about how everyone here was number one, and we can't all be number one. But damn it, I should be number one. I was writing a great paper, but it knocked his eyes out.
interesting choice of words, isn't it? Sounds like everything was riding on this one paper. Don't be ordinary. It should be the motto of this place. Every night, till one, two in the morning, then you have to be fresh the next day. You have to make sure that you can keep 20 torts cases severed in your mind from 15 contract cases and 10 civil pro cases. But I was doing it. I was killing myself, but I was doing it. And I've blown it, haven't I? Leaves right. Here, let me show you. Oh. Oops, you're gonna burn it. <laughs> okay. Maybe it's not high enough. Go like this. I knocked on your door at 11 o'clock last night. We were out. I was home by 10 and I was in the library until 1. So? So what, so? So you were out with Herb again. How did it go? Went fine. You know, Laura, I've been having certain thoughts lately that I haven't had in a long time. Like about being a woman. I've been so focused on starting school. You know, you can be a law student and a woman at the same time. It's been done. We've been out several times now, and, um... I don't know. What if he wants to, you know... Well, then, um, if you want, you can, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, you know, it in so long. I don't know how to, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Don't worry. Can't be serious. I'm going inside. I want to be there when the panel arrives. I'll be along. Oh. How do you feel? Nervous. I should hope so. I feel foolish arguing a case in front of Kingsfield. I'm way out of my league. He'll understand. He judges first your moot court. But that's different. This is real. I mean, a guy's career is on the line. I can see Kingsfield saying to himself, who does this guy think he is, you know? Tom, you want Steve reinstated, don't you? Yeah. Then it doesn't really matter what Kingsfield thinks, does it? Good luck. This is an appeal from a decision of the disciplinary board expelling Mr. Stephen Williamson from the law school. Board members have the file from the previous hearing. Is there anything you wish to add, Mr. Williamson? Uh, Mr. Ford will be presenting my case, sir. Mr. Ford. Huh? Your Honor. Mr. Ford, this will be an informal hearing. You need not concern yourself with courtroom proprieties. We shall, however, expect you to keep to the point. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. We do not dispute the facts set out in the file. Mr. Williamson did strike Professor Rowan. And while Professor Rowan could have been more gracious to Mr. Williamson, the attack was unprovoked. Nevertheless, we take issue with the punishment handed out by the disciplinary board and feel that at most, Mr. Williamson should be placed on probation. Excuse me, Mr. Ford. You concede that the young man struck the professor. 
And yet you say he should get probation. Don't you think that's a little bit permissive? Not at all, sir. If that were the end of the matter, I would agree with you. But once the panel recognizes Mr. Williamson's mental state at the time he struck Professor Rowan, we feel you will reinstate him. Dr. O'Neill, you are the school psychologist. You must be familiar with problems of stress. I would have to say that given the nature of this institution, that is the case. And you met with Mr. Williamson? Yes. Can you give us any insight into his frame of mind when he walked into Professor Rowan's class that day? My sense is that he was exhausted and anxious, coming off of weeks of very little sleep. May we take advantage of the informality of these proceedings? Mr. Williamson, exactly how much sleep had you had? About four hours a night for the past month. And you were in a state of some agitation? I haven't eaten a full meal since the moment I got here. Proceed. Dr. O'Neill. Could Mr. Williamson's capacity to control his behavior have been impaired? I would say yes. I appreciate that psychology is an imprecise science, but could we be a little less theoretical here? Under enough pressure, the combination of stress and fatigue can cause a serious chemical reaction. What kind of reaction? When the pressure builds to an unmanageable degree, the adrenal cortex manufactures a steroid called hydrocortisone. And this chemical can make you lose control? Most definitely. Could this chemical reaction happen to anyone? With enough stress, yes. Dr. O'Neill, does Mr. Williamson have any history of violence? Not that I'm aware of. Is that true, Mr. Williamson? After the incident, we contacted his college and his high school, and there is not any mention of any violent incidents in his record. So this was a first-time outburst of violence brought on by stress? In all likelihood, yes. Excuse me, doctor. You don't know that Williamson here had this kind of chemical reaction, this adrenal cortex problem. That's true. Uh, traces of it leave the body rather quickly, uh, within a few hours. So you can't really say for sure what made him strike Professor Rowan. Maybe he just lost his temper. That's possible. We can't say for sure. Except we're talking about someone with no history of violence who wrecked his legal career in a few seconds. In other words, law school made him do it. Maybe it did. Let me proceed in an orderly fashion. The Durham rule says, an accused is not criminally responsible if his unlawful act was the product of a mental disease or mental defect. Dr. O'Neill, at the time he struck Professor Rowan, was Mr. Williamson suffering from a mental disease or defect? As far as I can tell, yes. And was his behavior the product of a mental disease or defect? I would say so. Then under the Durham rule, Mr. Williamson was not criminally responsible. Mr. Ford, remember, this is not a criminal trial. We are not here to assess criminal intent and the penalties that it entails. Yes, sir, but the decision of the panel would have a similar effect. Once thrown out of law school, he would be deprived of a career for which he has aimed all his life, and that is tantamount to a prison sentence. Gentlemen, I have just become aware of the time. Shall we recess until tomorrow? But they may actually buy it. What's the matter? It's a good argument. Come on, a guy slugs a professor. You just can't let him walk. He was insane at the time. Nuts. Bonkers. That's not insane. Insane is when you speak gibberish and you hear funny noises. Yeah, like the good old days when they used leeches to cure a fever. So what do you want to do, Laura? Let off anybody who uh, commits a crime whose biorhythms were screwed up? The law says you were guilty unless you were insane, not cranky. Oh, look, all of these legal principles like free will and criminal responsibility were developed in the 19th century or earlier. I mean, everything was simple then, nice and neat. Uh, someone was either insane or sane. Someone either said yes or no. Then along comes psychology, which delves into the unconscious and lets us know that people aren't aware of why they do things. I mean, think about it, Belle. You've probably salted that hamburger because it pleased your mother. And does that give me the right to go out and kill her? The law convicts people who act from free will. But when the body is manufacturing chemicals, which you don't even know you're producing... Yeah, but where do you begin to draw the line with people's psyches? I mean, this guy was kind of out of control. This guy, well, he was defying authority. 
I mean, you got to start drawing some lines. Yeah, you do. But you can't set the clock back a hundred years. Please be seated, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Most of the testimony and the arguments presented here were designed to show that Mr. Williamson was temporarily insane at the moment of the assault on Professor Rowan. Because of Mr. Williamson's condition, it was held that he cannot properly be disciplined. A number of legal precedents were cited and a good case was made to establish this. I'm sure you are both aware. Other witnesses, equally expert, might have offered testimony markedly different from that given by Dr. O'Neill. In point of fact, there are sharp intramural conflicts among practitioners, both psychiatry and the law. And both these professions tend to be in conflict with each other. The law tends to prefer things concrete and definite. Psychiatry deals with ambiguities, intangibles. These divergent concepts may draw closer, may even mesh. However, a ruling in this case must now be made. And in making it, we must act as lawyers as responsible agents of this institution. Everyone is subject to pressures, to tensions, to personal demons. They come with life. We have been told that the demons plaguing Mr. Williamson were more insidious than most. Nevertheless, as institution, we must take steps to protect itself. And if Mr. Williamson was unable to cope with the stresses of first-year law school, one must question his fitness for the second or third year or for a legal career itself, accordingly. The decision of the disciplinary board to expel Mr. Williamson is affirmed. However, this expulsion is not permanent. Nor should it be. It would be unjust to foreclose on a young man's entire future because of a single wrong he committed for whatever reason. Here, too, I think we are following the basic principle of law which holds that a guilty person shall be welcomed back into society when he has paid his reasonable debt. Mr. Williams, you are suspended from this school for a period of three years. At the end of that period, if you choose, you may apply for readmission. I cannot guarantee, of course, that any such request would be granted. It will depend, I suspect, on whether you can show that you have exorcised your demons, or at least manage to control and contain them. It's been a wonderful evening. I, I wish it weren't over yet. I wish it weren't either. Would you like to come inside? Sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, no. Everybody will be in their rooms either studying or asleep. Come on. <laughs> oh, sorry. Dad. Eugene, hello. <clears throat> that was a nice shot.
Doesn't anyone have any studying to do? <laughs> Can I get you something? Sure. What do you have? Let me check my drawer of goodies here. I have a half a box of cheesy, some choco snaps, some rice cakes, and I have a little trail mix. We could use the soda machine down the hall. No, you know, as a matter of fact, I, I'm really still pretty full from dinner. I am, too. Well, would you like to sit down? What do you think you're doing? With put me down, Belle. Laura, put me down. Let me out of... warm in here, isn't it? Yeah, it is warm. So what do we do now? I have an idea. You do? <laughs> it's really warm in here. I'm going to open up a window, okay? Oh, well, I'm beginning to like it warm. know how to do things like this. Um, I mean, do you make the first move? Do I make the first move? Do I light candles or put pretty music on the radio? Maybe I have a bottle of wine in my room. I, I don't know. Herb. I haven't been out on a date since I'm 19 years old. And and then we didn't get beyond kissing. <laughs> what are you laughing at me for? Oh, Rose, I'm just as scared as you. You are? I haven't had a date since I was 25. Yeah, but you've been divorced for, what, almost a year? What does that mean? I'm a swinger? I just, I've been too involved in my work and... Uh, I didn't even know if I wanted to be involved with someone. You're the first woman that I have wanted to be with. And now... You're not so sure? No, no, it's just that... We're going too fast. Exactly. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. I feel exactly the same way. Honest, I do. I don't want to blow this with you, Rose. I... I would feel more secure if, um... Maybe we got to know each other a little bit first. Yeah, exactly. I'll be back in town a lot now, and I hope you'll see me again. I really want to, you know. I really do. Don't go. We don't want to disappoint the kids by you leaving early. <laughs> What'd you have in mind? You want a neck? <laughs> You've double-checked everything? That's it. I'll have these shipped back later. You can make one hell of a lawyer. Yeah, we'll see. Hope I can be as good. You are going to try to come back, then? Yeah, I am. Take care. You, too. Thank you.
uh, it might not be as good as the diner across the street, but I think I know a few good places. Dinner? Yeah, my son can get along without me for one night. Tomorrow? Well, I'm going to be in town all week, so if tomorrow's bad... No, no, no. Tomorrow's just fine. Well, good. I have to go. Uh, where am I going to uh, pick you up? Why don't we meet right here? Well, here. <laughs> okay. How about 8 o'clock? Okay, fine. I'll see you at 8. Oh, Rose. Samuel. Herb. Huh? Soloway. Soloway. <sighs> Eugene, I just met a terrific I'm woman. Not... There's only half a cup here. Uh, she lives right here in your dorm room. Who? Who? The law student that I'm, I'm going to be taking to dinner tomorrow night. What? You're taking out a law student? Yes, I just met her. She's really, really nice lady. That's disgusting. These women are 23 years old. Eugene. First you leave my mother, now you are stooping girls. Eugene. It's just beneath contempt, that's all. In the first place, your mother left me, and in the second place, I'm not talking about a girl, I'm talking about a grown woman. This is Rose Samuel. Oh, my God, that's even worse. Why? She's a very nice lady. She's so old. So... Don't you ever leave this place? My home away from home. You might as well bring a sleeping bag. Mm. Good idea. What are you working on now? Same thing. My torts paper for Rowan. I thought you'd finish that. Isn't it due tomorrow? I read it through. It wasn't good enough. Steve, this is from the 18th century. You don't have to go back that far. The doctrine of res ipsa locator has been undergoing judicial evolution for hundreds of years. I need to trace its development if I'm to have a clear understanding of its present significance. Yeah, but that's a lot of extra work. Makes for better paper. You going to make the deadline? I'll make it. Well, I'm going back to the dorm. You ought to do the same. We got Kingsfield tomorrow morning. I know. I gotta get this right. All right. too old to date. The only time you're too old to date is when you're dead. You've got to keep the juices flowing. I'll tell you something. I was Veronica Virgin when I was single, and the minute I separated, I became a virgin again. That reminds me of a joke. I heard it. He is really attractive, though. Why am I telling all this to you? I'm old enough to be your mother. You're three years older than my mother. <laughs> really, you're going to have a great time. Trust me. No, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Just be yourself. Obviously, he liked what he saw. He wouldn't have asked you out in the first place. I can't go through with this. I don't know how to do this. It's a mistake. I know it. Look, if you're that nervous about it, I will coach you. I've had lots of experience. I used to give my daughters this lecture. I just don't remember what I used to say.
Up until this time, we have studied but for causation. This is a specific act without which a certain result would not have occurred. <clears throat> a cause. is a grocery store where he has an account. He picks up an apple from a box which is clearly marked 25 cents a piece. He holds it up so that the clerk inside can see. And then he passes on. Now, is there a contract? Mr. Williamson? No, there is no express agreement. There's really no agreement of any kind. There's none in writing and no oral agreement. I see. Have you yourself, Mr. Williamson, never entered into an agreement where no words passed your lips? No. Not even in your personal relationships? You would appear to lead a very limited life, Mr. Williamson. <laughs> Board. There is an agreement, but it is implied rather than expressed. Is it implied in fact or in law? Car stalls at an intersection. A minute later, a second car runs a red light and smacks into the first car. Did the stalled battery cause the accident? This was but for causation. Had the car not stalled, it would not have been in the intersection to be smacked broadside by the second car. The question is whether the defective battery was the legal cause of the accident. Thursday, we'll begin with the cases which deal with the collateral source rule. Remember that that prohibits defendants from forcing plaintiffs to deduct insurance payments from the amount awarded by the court. I'd suggest... <clears throat> I'd suggest that you pay particular attention to the policy arguments, pro and con. Four eighty-seven of the case book. Okay, that's it for today. Steve, Professor Rowan. Yes. I feel terrible over missing your class. I know our papers are due today. I'd like to be able to turn it in tomorrow. I'm sorry. Tomorrow's too late. The assignment was for today. Yes, I know, but... Mr. Williamson, if you were practicing law and were required to deliver a brief on a certain date, I'm sure you'd get it in on time. The circumstances are different. I don't think they are. But, sir... I don't make exceptions. You had three weeks to write this, just like everyone else in class. I did write it. I just wanted to make it better. That's why... There are no excuses, Mr. Williamson. I'm sorry. Please. Please, will you listen to me? I told you I'd get it in! Hey! What's the matter with you? I'm all right. Oh, my God. Thank you. Oh, my God. Nice, isn't it? It'll be swollen for days. So instead of being regarded as a fount of wisdom, 
I'll be looked on by my students as an object of pity or a source of pleasure, depending on how they feel about me. Well, at least you won't have to miss any classes. Unless, of course, you don't feel up to them. <sighs> I may miss one the day I appear in court. I see. So you are going to press charges, then? First thing tomorrow. You don't seem pleased. Well, you are certainly within your rights, Michael. But you wish I'd reconsider. Charles, I don't want to put the boy in jail. And I'm sure that won't happen. He'll be fine. Maybe he'll get probed. In law? Really? And what law implies it, Mr. Ford? Well... I ask you again, Mr. Ford, which law... I'm not sure. For good reason. It is a contract implied in fact. Now, did you read the material, Mr. Ford? I did, sir, several times. Well, just once during those several times, absorb it. on my dress and candy on my hips. Oh. I'm so sorry. Please, it was all my fault. No, no, no. Let's call it a draw. God was trying to tell me something. I was going to have candy for dinner. <laughs> Is this one of your favorite restaurants? Deluxe. There's a diner across the street if I want to go four-star. <sighs> Listen, my name is Herb. Hello. I'm Rose. Nice to meet you. Formally, that is. <laughs> I'm here visiting my son. How nice. Do you have a kid here, too? No, I have me here. I'm a law student. No kidding. Oh, that's great. How does your husband feel about that? Well, I don't know. We don't talk. We're separated. Oh, that's terrific. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm not married either. I'm divorced. Could I buy you a candy bar somewhere else? Oh, no, no. I I'd love to, but I have a study group. I really have to go. Well, what about dinner tomorrow night?